Let me address another issue that came up yesterday in the opening phase of this uh, nomination hearing. Uh, and it's the issue involving child pornography. I want to turn to that issue because it was raised multiple times, primarily by the senator from Missouri. And it was, he was questioning your sentencing record in child pornography cases uh, that do not involve the production of pornographic material. They're known as non-production cases. I wanted to put some context here. The senator from Missouri has in his tweets said of your position on this issue, Judge Jackson has a pattern of letting child porn offenders off the hook for their appalling crimes, both as a judge and a policymaker. She's been advocating it since law school. This goes beyond soft on crime, the senator said. I'm concerned this is a record that endangers our children. I thought about his charges as I watched you and your family listening carefully yesterday and what impact it might have had on you personally to know that your daughters, husband, parents, family, and friends were hearing the charges that your implementation of this law, sentencing, endangered children. Could you tell us what was going through your mind at that point? Thank you, Senator. Um, as a mother and a judge who has had to deal with these cases, I was thinking that nothing could be further from the truth. These are some of the most difficult cases that a judge has to deal with because we're talking about pictures of sex abuse of children. We're talking about graphic descriptions that judges have to read and consider when they decide how to sentence in these cases. And there's a statute that tells judges what they're supposed to do. Congress has decided what it is that a judge has to do in this and any other case when they sentence. And that statute, that statute doesn't say look only at the guidelines and stop. The statute doesn't say um, impose the, the highest possible penalty for this sickening and egregious crime. The, the statute says it, calculate the guidelines, but also look at various aspects of this offense and impose a sentence that is, quote, sufficient but not greater than necessary to promote the purposes of punishment. And in every case, when I am dealing with something like this, it is important to me to make sure that the children's perspective, the children's voices are represented in my sentencing. And what that means is that for every defendant who comes before me and who suggests, as they often do, that they're just a looker, that these crimes don't really matter, they've collected these things on the internet and it's fine, I tell them about the victim statements that have come in to me as a judge. I tell them about the adults who were former child sex abuse victims who tell me that they will never have a normal adult relationship because of this abuse. I tell them about the ones who say, I went into prostitution, I uh, fell into drugs because I was trying to suppress the hurt that was done to me as an, as an infant. And the one that was the most um, telling to me that I describe at almost every one of these sentencings when I look in the eyes of a defendant who is weeping because I'm giving him a significant sentence. What I say to him is, do you know that there is someone who has written to me and who has told me that she has developed agoraphobia. She cannot leave her house because she thinks that everyone she meets will have seen her, will have seen her pictures on the internet. They're out there forever. At the most vulnerable time of her life, and so she's paralyzed. 
I tell that story to every child porn defendant as a part of my sentencings so that they understand what they have done. I say to them that there's only a market for this kind of material because there are lookers, that you are contributing to child sex abuse, and then I impose a significant sentence and all of the additional restraints that are available in the law. These people are looking at 20, 30, 40 years of supervision. They can't use their computers in a normal way for decades. I am imposing all of those constraints because I understand how significant, how damaging, how horrible this crime is. It, is, it should be noticed as well that the cases which the senator from Missouri referred to yesterday all resulted in incarceration uh, of some magnitude. In the one case, the Hilly case, I want to quote what you said on the record. This family has been torn apart, speaking to the defendant, by your criminal actions. You saw it on the faces of those women. You heard it in their voices and the impact of your acts on those very real victims who are still struggling to recover this day makes your crime among the most serious criminal offense this court has ever sentenced. And you imposed a sentence of 29 and a half years on that defendant. So the notion that you look at this casually or with leniency, as the Senator said, uh, your record belies that. And in fact, what we are dealing with here is an issue which even this committee and members on the committee have been loath to address again. The original law was written at least nine or 10, maybe longer years ago, and the quantity of material was relevant to the sentencing. And now that we have computer access to voluminous amounts of material, uh, it has raised questions, has it not, within the judiciary as to the appropriate sentencing in today's circumstances. This was a question that was raised before the Sentencing Commission, was it not? It, it was, Senator. The Sentencing Commission um, has written at least one report, it did when I was there, looking at the operation of this guideline. As you said, the guideline was based originally on uh, a, a statutory scheme and on directives, specific directives by Congress at a time in which more serious child pornography offenders were identified based on the volume, based on the number of photographs that they received in the mail. And that made totally total sense before when we didn't have the internet, when we didn't have distribution. But the way that the guideline is now structured based on that set of circumstances is leading to extreme disparities in the system because it's so easy for people to get volumes of this kind of material now by computers. So it's not doing the work of differentiating who is a more serious offender in the way that it used to. So the commission has taken that into account and, and perhaps even more importantly, courts are adjusting their sentences in order to account for the changed circumstances. But it says nothing about the court's view of the seriousness of this offense. Judge, the, uh, there have been several news organizations that have taken a look at the Senator from Missouri's charges, ABC News, CNN News, The Washington Post, and others, and have concluded that they are inaccurate uh, and unfair to you in their conclusions. Uh, in fact, one writer has said they are meritless to the point of uh, unacceptable levels. Nationally, in 2019, only 30% of non-production child pornography offenders received a sentence within the guidelines range, fewer than 30%. Between 2015 and 2020, in the DC District Court where you served, judges imposed below guideline sentences in non-production cases 80% of the time for the reasons you've just explained. Judges in Missouri, the home state of the senator who has criticized your record did so 77% of the time. One particular judge whom the senator supported 
to become a federal judge by appointment of President Trump. Uh, unfortunately, has a uh, 77% record, if I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to make sure that this is accurate. Here it is. In the United States versus Klotz, Tr Trump appointed Judge Sarah Pitlick, the senator's choice for the Eastern District of Missouri, sentenced an individual convicted of possession of child, child pornography to 60 months, well below the 135 to 168 month sentence recommended by the guidelines. She appears to have run into the same issue or same challenge that you have described here. So going forward, uh, in terms of this issue, it, it seems that we at least share the burden by your interpretation uh, as to define this statute in modern terms, in terms of technology as it exists today. Is that the way you see it? Senator, C Congress is tasked with the responsibility of setting penalties. Congress tells judges what we're supposed to do when we sentence. And what I'd say is that Congress has to determine how it wishes uh, for judges to handle these cases. But as it currently stands, the way that the law is written, the way that Congress has directed the Sentencing Commission uh, appears to be not consistent with how these crimes are uh, committed and therefore, there's extreme disparity, as you pointed out. There are judges who are varying because our ultimate charge from this body is to sentence in a way that is sufficient but not greater than necessary to promote the purposes of punishment. 